Let's talk about a couple elements of the Christmas story this morning, of course. This is a cave that in Bethlehem. And uh, you can see that low roof and all of that. This might have been the cave we were we went through there as part of our time last month and then this is the next group after us and as you can see with this oh thank you brother so helpful as you can see with this particular cave not really fit for the king of kings and lord of lords but this is where they would have ended up in this cave or a cave very similar an interesting note is right down the hill from this cave is where shepherds watch their flocks and so it's just from where we are, we could go to a cliff right there and look down, and that is where shepherds are at. And so it could be the cave, it could be very one like the cave, but this was the setting Pastor Adam talked about this last week, that a cave is where the family went when they got to Bethlehem. By the way, at the end, I pray that you won't leave early. I'm going to try my best to allow enough time. We have a very special communion for you today where our leaders are going to serve you. You'll come to these two tables, there's two in the lobby. There's also some up in the balcony for all of you folks. And they'll serve you the bread and the juice. And the juice are in cups that have come from Bethlehem, courtesy of uh, the saps got those for us. And so there's enough for everybody. So come up. You'll be blessed. Have communion. Please don't leave early or you'll miss, I think, a moment for you that you can come and be blessed and have that. But then those cups from Bethlehem, take them with you. They're yours to keep, okay? They're yours to keep today, so super cool. Well, swaddling clothes, we heard that in the story, or strips of cloth, we heard as the story was read. Now, we know, and I've got all these great kids here in the front, so let me ask you kids a question, though you're excited about your gift bags, and that's okay, very good. But let me ask you, in our story that Grandpa Jim read us, there are people mentioned in this story who are people mentioned in our Christmas story? Jacob? What, shepherds? Did you say? Yes? Angels? Who else? Matthew? Miriam. Is that the name for Mary? I think it is. Something Mary is, is mentioned. That's good. Somebody else? Uh, Jesus' dad here on earth. Emily? Joseph. That's right. So we have these people that are part of the story, but there's other parts of the story that I find interesting, a couple that I want to share with you today that swaddling clothes, no big deal that Mary would put Jesus, would wrap him up in something that was like a blanket. There's no big deal about that, or is there? All right, Melody, I need your uh, help for a second, okay? Melody, come and help me for just a second, all right? Now, today when uh, we take our, our kids home, obviously, we put them in a blanket. And we wrap them up, and we make sure that they're, they're warm and they're secure and all that. So come, come right here. I don't want to mess up your beautiful hair. I'll go here like that, okay? So we would wrap them up. Probably you're, you've got a great mama. So probably your mom did this with some kind of a blanket. And is this blanket soft? What do you think? Yeah? Right there on your cheek. Yeah, we're, bu we're busy with uh, eating candy, and I understand that. So it's soft. So our moms would do this, and they do that, and the hospital does that. It puts us in a nice blanket that's soft and will keep us warm and give us comfort, all right? You, you can keep this if you'd like to. You can have this, okay? You have that, and it's nice and soft. You don't like it, give it to your brother. He needs to take a nap sometimes. Not your older brother, your younger brother, Jason. Lo love him, so he may like that right there. But Jesus' mom wrapped him in what they had. Remember, they're poor. They don't have a lot of money. That's why they're riding a donkey across the desert. We'll talk about that in just a minute. But she wrapped them in strips of cloth, that swaddling clothes, really like rags. Why? Because they're poor. Rich people would never do that. Rich people, when they had a baby, it was a fine shawl. It was a fine robe. They would wrap up their kids like that. But Mary and Joseph, they didn't have money, and so that's how they would wrap him up, swaddling clothes, or one translation says snugly cloths. That's how they would wrap up Jesus once they got there. So what's the big deal? That's no big deal. That's what they had. They wrapped up Jesus. He had a wonderful mother. That's what they would do. Well, there's more to those rags, those swaddling clothes, and I want to talk to you about that in just a moment. Mary wrapped him up. The Greek original, she would wrap him like a mummy. When you wrapped up kids like that, you wrapped them so tight, maybe their eyes they could see, maybe they could, their mouth was open, but the rest of them was so tightly wrapped up in those strips of clothing to protect them 
to guard them, to do all of that. That was the tradition of that particular day, and that's what she would have done with Jesus once they got to Bethlehem. Now, Pastor Adam talked about this last week, the journey from Nazareth to Bethlehem, 80 miles or so. It would have taken them a week, probably two, to get there. Now, you ladies who've had children, raise your hands this morning. How many of you would love to travel 80 miles on a donkey? Raise your hand. Across the desert. That's what she had to do. It's amazing on a bumpy donkey, and, we, and it may have not been a donkey, but it probably wasn't a white horse, because that's what kings would ride. By the way, when Jesus comes back someday, he will ride a white horse the next time as a conquering king. That's the next trip when he comes. But the first trip when he came, and his mom on a donkey headed from Bethlehem to Nazareth, 80 bumpy miles. It's amazing, Pastor Adam, as you said last week, that she didn't have that baby out there somewhere in the desert. Amazing. When we were close to having our third child, which his name is Dustin, our second son, my wife, Licia, so uh, wanted to have that kid and be done with that pregnancy. There is a term that one translation in the Bible uses about great with child with Mary. She was ready to have baby Jesus on this journey. Alicia was great with child with baby Dustin. And so we were ready. We had two kids. We were ready for number three and excited about it. And he just would not come. And so she said, let's go to the mall. Let's go to the mall. Let's walk around. Let's stir him up. Let's get him going and ready to be born. And so we did that. And I don't remember if it was a stroller or it was a basket. It was a stroller of his older brother, right? That's what I thought. So here I am. I'm, I'm, I'm pushing Ryan is his name around. And she's walking next to me. And we're trying to get baby Dustin out and it's not working. She's going to give me the stroller. I said, I can't give you the stroller. That, that, that's inhumane. You're great with child. I mean, we don't want to have the child in the mall, right? I don't know how close you are. You look close. You look beautiful, but you look close. Well, I give her the stroller and here we go. She was determined. So here we are. She's pushing the stroller and here I am just singing along, happy as can be, thinking Dustin might come that night, whatever. Oh, I can tell you the looks ladies were giving us, giving me at the mall. How could you do this to this poor lady? They come, oh, you poor lady. I am amazed that not one lady hit me with her purse. I can't believe it. Because everybody who looked at us said, what an unbelievable, uncaring husband this guy is. That was hard enough. 80 miles across the desert on a bumpy donkey. But he had to get there. He had to get to Bethlehem. Why did he have to get to Bethlehem? Because God had promised this was going to happen. This is the city. Now that I've been there, I kind of get it. Jerusalem is a magnificent, beautiful city. That's where a king should be. And that's where he will rule and reign one day. Five miles away is Bethlehem. And Bethlehem compared to Jerusalem is not much. It's not much. It's not a great city. It's not a beautiful city. If you question what I'm saying, you should go with us in two years. We're going in 2020. So then you can check out everything I'm going to tell you for the next two years, if it's true. It's true. Bethlehem, not so much. Close spot. But he had to get there because it fulfilled, it was going to fulfill prophecy. And every time that God gives a prophecy, he fulfills every prophecy. If he's given you a promise, mark it down, write it down. You might have to wait, but one day he's going to fulfill that prophecy in your life going to happen every time he does that. Micah 5, 2, but you, O Bethlehem, Ephraim, are only a small village among all the people of Judah, yet a ruler of Israel whose origins are in the distant past will come from you on my behalf. When was this written? This was written 700 or so B.C., 700 years before Christ would come. Micah had to be thinking, are you kidding me? A ruler's going to come. The Messiah's going to come. Why Bethlehem? Bethlehem is nothing. Why would he come there? He's got to come to Jerusalem. Am I even saying the right prophecy, God? And God said, you say Bethlehem is going to be the place. And 700 years later, that's why they had to get to Bethlehem. They had to keep going. Jesus couldn't be born in the way because it fulfilled prophecy. But maybe you don't know this. Maybe you do. That was one of 300 prophecies for you kids and your kids are so smart but that's predictions that something's going to come true hundreds of years before thousands of years before Jesus Christ his birth 
his life, his death, his resurrection, 300 prophecies, and he's fulfilled them all. There is no one. There will never be anyone like the Lord Jesus Christ. Nobody has ever pulled this off. In fact, check it out. No one else has ever fulfilled eight prophecies. Oh, there's nobody like Jesus Christ. That's why we're here today. That's why we worship. It's not to see great kids. It's not just to come to church. I hope it's not just to come to church. Well, I came on Christmas Sunday, Pastor. I'll see you next year. Or maybe I'll see you on Easter. Well, you're always welcome here. We come here because Jesus Christ is alive and fulfilled prophecy after prophecy after prophecy. He is the King of kings. And he is the Lord of lords. Now, when the wise men came, and we read that a couple weeks ago, they came in a caravan. We think of three. They brought gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. So we think there was three. Not true. They travel in caravans because across the, the desert, it was dangerous. By the way, that's another reason for these, these rags, these cloths. Because it was Jewish tradition. If you did that kind of a journey across the desert being dangerous, you might die out there and so you actually took your burial clothes that's actually what swaddling clothes are so Joseph probably thought well the Messiah's got to get there but I don't know if I'm going to get there so they take that with them that in case they died the Jewish people coming through there would honor them and bury them in these clothes they had taken along that's why Mary would have had these swaddling clothes it's so much more than just wrapping up baby Jesus it's so powerful it's like when the wise men came and they got to Bethlehem and they brought gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. What do you use myrrh for? You use myrrh for embalming bodies. It was symbolic that Jesus Christ, someday, 33 and a half years later after this, was going to die. These rags, these cloths, they wrapped him in. It was symbolic that he was going to die someday for the entire world. That's why they had to get to Bethlehem. They had to get there because it was all part of the prophecy. It had to happen. So they had to keep going. The wise men, they had 300 or 1,000 people in that caravan. You had Mary, Joseph, and Jesus. They were alone across the de desert. It was very dangerous. And yet, they weren't alone. Because as they went across that desert, Father God, Jehovah, the Jewish folks say Yahweh, that's his name. Father God went with them and protected them, and they were on a mission. In fact, they've been on a mission even before Adam and Eve sinned, and we all sinned. They've been on a mission that the only way that people are going to be able to make it to heaven is through Jesus Christ. You're going to have to go. You're going to have to go and live on this earth and die for the sins of the people. They were on a mission. So, of course, God was going to get Jesus and his family to Bethlehem, but it didn't stop in Bethlehem because where he was really headed was Jerusalem, where he was going to die in Jerusalem for our sins. Bethlehem, the Christmas story, it's just the beginning of the story of Jesus Christ. Well, Jesus wants to direct your steps as Father God directed those folks across the desert and got them safely to Bethlehem. And as we say, the rest is history. He wants to direct all your steps. You kids that are uh, under 12, please stand. If you're under 12, please stand. He wants to direct your steps. If you're under 12, if you're 0 to 11, none of you are 0. All right. I need to be clear, so I'll make it clear. Now, keep standing. I want to illustrate my point. Jesus wants to direct all your steps. What do I mean by that? Hopefully, none of you care about who you're going to marry yet. Hopefully, none of you care about that. All right? Someday, you will. It is a big deal to Jesus Christ that you people, you men and women, marry the right person. It's a huge deal to him. Therefore, that's why we pray, and as parents, we're praying, aren't we? Yes, we are. I see you guys over here. i got to come over here, but these beautiful people mixed in the crowd, these under 12 folks, these sharp men with their ties today. Some grandmas in this church are going to give you a big kiss later on if you let them. They love that, all right? It's a big deal. Who you marry? Now, we know one thing from Scripture. We don't marry, we shouldn't marry a non-Christian. That's true. We should be yoked together with a non-Christian. So we know that. The other thing I would say, this is not in the Bible, but this is from me, and I'm saying it for your parents. We'd all like you to get married, not before 30 years of age, okay? Come on, parents. Come on, parents. 
but you, it's a big deal to Jesus Christ who you marry. Now you can have a seat. Thank you for helping me out. And as you pray and as you let Jesus guide your steps with who you marry, he might even send you somebody beautiful and someone that Jesus Christ sent me a dream about and I didn't even know her name. Come on, somebody. Jesus wants to direct our steps. All right, so I'm talking to Sophia the other day. He cares where you go to college. We're talking about your 99.9%. You wonder why I asked you? I'm, I'm, I'm putting together material for my sermon. So when I ask you questions, think about, what is this for? Are you really interested in me? I actually am really interested in you. My will, you go to Vanguard. You said you're 99.9%, but Fullerton's out there and San Diego State's out there. So Jesus will let you know if you ask him. Is it Vanguard, San Diego State, somewhere else? He will let you know that he cares about where you go to college. Grace, where's Grace? Where's Grace? You guys all moved on me. You were here, I think. You moved over there. I'm sure you prayed. My will? You go to Vanguard. How many years have I bugged you about Vanguard? Ever since we've known each other, right? But you went to Trinity because that's the Lord's will, right? That's the Lord's will. I saw Heather's back, back over there in the corner. My will? is Heather that you're at Vanguard. You must have prayed. You must have asked the Lord. You're at a beautiful university, San Diego State. You prayed. You went there because Jesus wants to direct all of our steps. You great guys, you were on the wrong path. You were off the path. Jesus Christ comes along and he pulls you back onto the path. Now he wants you to go down that path, not turn to the right or left. Keep going and you can do it with the power of Jesus Christ. He wants to direct your steps the rest of your life. You might have gotten off, but now Jesus Christ will help you. This is the first step. It's Santa Ana, and then it's Riverside, and then it might be L.A. for ministry or whatever. This is the beginning. Let him, he wants to direct your steps like Father God got them to Bethlehem. He wants to get you to heaven, you and me and all of us. So that's what we need to do. We need to allow him to direct our steps. And then, I know this makes you, it makes you nervous. I told you what I really wanted to be was a talk show host. That's, you know, they walk, they walk the aisles. They do this, so you folks in the balcony don't, don't get this moment, but where's, where's my little Carol? Come, come here by me, because it's dark back here. We've darkened things. It'll be kind of a candlelight feel today. Hopefully you, you enjoy that. This little dear lady. Is this lady beautiful? Is she gorgeous? This lady gorgeous. Yes, you are. Just take the encouragement. All right, take the encouragement. 92, 93. 93 years old. There's a crazy Christmas song that says grandmother got run over by a reindeer. <laughs> this grandmother got run over by a shopping cart at 99 cent store. That's true. I would go and see her and her leg was broken and badly black and blue and I'd come see and anoint you with oil and pray for you. This lady, look, at she's standing. She's walking. She's driving a little red sports car today. Now, that's what the Lord will do if we let him direct our steps. In fact, if he, we let him direct our steps from birth like these kids through life to death, it wasn't your time because you tell me, you pray for me every day, yes? And you pray for the church every day. Oh, do we need you around here? Yes. Oh, let her know that we love little, little Carol. So from birth through your life unto death, Jesus wants to direct your steps. And by the way, Mary, Joseph, and Jesus were not alone crossing the desert. And you're never alone. If you let Jesus take control of your life, let him take control of your life. Well, one more thing today. This time of year is a bad time for a lot of people. I hear that song, and I hear it over and over again, as you do if you hear music this time of year that it's the most wonderful time of the year. It's not the most wonderful time of the year for everybody. A lot of people get depressed, they get sad, their family hasn't worked out exactly like they, they like, our family's not exactly like we like. I miss my dad, my dad would have been 99 years old on Tuesday, born on Christmas Day, so I miss him, I look forward to seeing him in heaven someday, and so we all have probably stuff, but a lot of people struggle with it. There's someone 
very regular who was coming to our church that I haven't seen since before Thanksgiving. And he told me, I'll see you Jan January 6th. Too bad. Been able to minister to him on the phone, but he's depressed because of the holidays, because his family didn't work out like he thought it was going to. Well, I want to remind you about Jesus Christ. Not only will he direct our steps, but he will bring comfort. He is the comforter. And when he left the earth, he said, I'm going away. I'm going to send you another comforter. It's the Holy Spirit. So they always are sending comfort. The other thing is, we've heard from Isaiah 700 years before, Jesus Christ is going to be wonderful, counselor, the mighty God, the prince of peace. He brings peace into our situation. So if you need comfort, you need peace, whatever you need today, Jesus Christ not only wants to direct your life, but he will give you all those things, and you're never alone. Even in the month of December, as 237,000 people on a survey said, I feel alone. You're never alone as long as Jesus Christ is directing our steps. Why don't you stand this morning, and where it all begins, where it begins is accepting him as your Lord and Savior. I've tried to work on your mind and work on your heart today. There is nobody like Jesus Christ. You can believe it or not. Nobody ever fulfilled those prophecies. Nobody ever did the miracles he did. Nobody ever else has been born of a virgin and on and on and on and on. You can bank on it. You can put your life on it. It's amazing what he is all about. You're here you haven't accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, or you did, you've walked away, but boy, Christmas Sunday, it doesn't get much better than this, that we could come back to Jesus. Maybe Easter Sunday, that's probably better, but that's about it. Any Sunday is good. Any day of the week is good. But why not come back to Jesus Christ? Now raise your hand. We would so love to pray for you today if you need to come back, or for the very first time, Accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. That's why we're here. Do we love giving gifts to kids and their families and giving them Christmas? Oh, we love that. We're going to keep doing that. It's part of our mission. But we also do it so we can have an opportunity to share the greatest gift ever given to mankind from the foundation of the world, and it's the Lord Jesus Christ. So that's why we give that gift away. Anyone would raise a hand you're coming back or you've never accepted him but you'd love to today so look at the balcony I look down here all right you're here today well let's do this I see I see those hands amen who else would raise hands today thank you and say I want Jesus Christ there's no one like him I see those hands someone else I see those hands of these young people that's awesome you start off this early it'll get better as you go along i started off at 13 it gets better praise god who else who else would raise hands today and say i want jesus i want him. i want jesus yes anybody else so it'll help all of you see that hand awesome it'll help if we all pray this prayer i'm going to pray a prayer it's not just words we're praying to jesus all my friends are going to help me and let's all pray it. And if you raised your hands, or you didn't raise your hands, you're among friends here, So, but I know we get intimidated sometimes. Pray this prayer. You mean this prayer with your heart. You are a Christian in just a moment, and we'll welcome you into the family of God. You say, i got to do something, Pastor. It can't be that easy. It's that easy. Why? Because it was rough on Jesus. It was tough on Jesus. He went from Bethlehem, but he had to get to Jerusalem in 30 three and a half years he got there died on the cross it was rough on him oh but it's so easy on oh, no. us so we all pray we repeat after me let's help our friends that have raised their hands today lord jesus i'm coming to you i accept you as lord and savior of my life i believe there is no one like you you're the Savior of the world, and I accept that fact. And I ask you to forgive me my sins, my mistakes, the things I've done wrong.
please forgive me. Accept me. I'm coming to you. You're my Lord and Savior, starting right now. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord, our Savior, our healer, our soon coming King. Amen and amen and amen. Come on. Let's let these folks know that's what you do.